come on, Emily, we're going to be late. Emily, come on. How did you do that? Just drive. What? Major. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Media Channel. I'm your host, William Hugh. It's true. Now, as you can probably guess from the opening sketch in this episode, we're going to be doing the old jump through a closed car door effect. Now, when I first tried to do this effect, I thought it would be a simple jump cut, a straight cut from the actress being on the outside of the car to her being on the inside of the car. When I tried it, however, the results were less than impressive. So I rejigged the edits with a bit of masking and the effect was much more convincing. You want me to shut up now and tell you how it's done, don't you? Okay then, here you go. First, shoot your clip. For this kind of effect, it's essential that the camera doesn't move during the shoot, so lock it off on a tripod. Now, set the camera running and get your actor to make a couple of approach and jumps at the door. This way, you can choose the best one to use in the edit. Then, with the camera still running, and without moving it in any way, get your actor to do a few drops into the seat. Again, you can choose the best ones to use in the edit. Got your shots? Good. Now let's import them into the editor and do the effect. So, here is my footage in my video editor, in this case, Sony Vegas Pro 13. But the process should work just as well in any of the Sony Pro editors. Now for the sake of clarity, I'm going to get rid of the soundtrack here. It's only my voice directing the actress, and I don't need it. So to get rid of it, I right click on the soundtrack, select group, and then remove from, which releases it from the video. So I can now right click on it again, and select delete. Which leaves me with just the video. Now as you may remember, the first half of the video is the bit where I have three or four takes of the actress jumping at the car. And the end bit of the clip has three or four takes of her just flopping into the seat. So now it's time to choose the best example of each to use in the edit. To snip them out, you simply place the cursor where you want to cut, and press the S for split on the keyboard, and hey presto, it's cut. Any bits you don't need, simply right click and delete. Select your second clip in exactly the same way. So I've selected my two clips, and here they are. This is the clip where the actor runs up to the car. And this is the clip where she falls into the seat. Now the first thing we need to do is place the fall into the seat clip on a new video line beneath the other clip. Now I'm using the shuttle buttons to find the points just before the actor falls into the seat, which is about there. Now we need to match the head positions in the two clips. To make this a bit easier, I'm going to reduce the opacity of the top clip, effectively making it see-through, by simply dragging the top edge down like this. That should be enough. If I now slide the top clip above the bottom one like this, I can see through the top clip and easily match the position of the heads. Once matched, I can drag and trim the clip to that point. If we now reinstate the opacity and click through the frames, we can see a crude version of the effect in action. Now, I'm not totally satisfied with this crude version, so I'll continue to fine-tune the positioning until I come up with a pleasing edit. There, that one looks quite effective. So I'll just play it to check. And yes, I think I'll go with that one. Okay, now we need to blend the actual jump through the door. And we can do this with masking. So click on the Event Pan Crop tool here, enable masking by clicking here, and then on the masking line here. Also, make sure the Sync Cursor button here is on, so that the cursor here will reflect where the cursor is on the main timeline. So first, take the cursor to the very last frame in the clip, right at the end here. And using the shuttle buttons, take it back about five frames which should be enough to do the blend. Now we don't want any changes occurring between the beginning of the clip and this point. So I'm going to the Create Keyframe button here, 
which will create a keyframe with the same properties as the one before it, which in this case is the first one in the clip, and this ensures that no changes will happen between those two points. Now we can click forward one frame to create the first blended frame. Click on the anchor creation tool here, and click around the actress to create a smaller space than she actually occupies, completing the mask by clicking on the first point again. This piece we have just created will be overlaid on the clip beneath, and in order to blend it better and remove the hard edges, click on Feather Type here, and select both, meaning the mask will feather the edges both inside and outside, and about 5% feather should be ample. And if we take a cheeky little look at the preview, we can see that the actress is beginning to disappear from her feet upwards. So now we can shuttle forward to the next frame. As you can see, the properties of this frame have been taken as usual from the frame before it, which is nice because it means that we don't have to start from scratch. We can just click on the Edit tool here, and adjust the mask to make it a bit smaller. Now with earlier versions of Vegas Pro, you might have to move the anchor points individually, which might take a bit longer, but the effect will be exactly the same. If we now look at the preview, we can see how the actress is beginning to blend into the car door, and that looks fine. So just click the cursor forward one more frame, and it's basically a rinse and repeat operation, as we shrink the mask a wee bit more. A quick look at the preview, and it's all looking fine. So now, as you might have guessed, it's click forward one more frame, and reduce the final mask to the size of the window. A look at the preview shows us what this last frame before the inside of the car shots look like, and that looks fine. So I'll just bring back the cursor, and click through the frames one by one to check the flow of the effect. And it all looks good. So now simply render your edit, add a sound effect, and this is what you get. So there you have it, a nice little effect produced by the magic of masking. And if you want the uh, sound effect, then like every other sound effect used by the Media Channel, you can download it free from the website here. So that's all for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and I'll see you here next time on the Media Channel. Ja. So I rehashed the edits with a bit of masking and the infect the infect So I rehashed the edits with a bit of masking and the infect the infect impressive 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 <laughs>